Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, Dr. Dan here. Thanks for joining us today on Doc Talk. We're going to have a great show. It's one of those shows that we enjoy doing. It's talking about calving disorders. Dr. Matt Meisner from Kansas State's Veterinary Health Center is going to be here. It's going to be a great show. You're going to learn lots. I'm going to learn lots. We'll see you after the break. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprevo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprevo. Zuprevo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprevo from Merck Animal Health. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Welcome to the show. Thank, glad, glad to be here. Always. Folks, this is Dr. Matt Meisner. He's here at the Kansas State College of Veterinary Medicine. He's over in the Veterinary Health Center, where he is an associate clinical professor in the Department of Clinical Sciences. And Matt, we're going to talk about calving, and we're going to talk about, and that's all right, you're a clinician, the yeah. beeper's supposed to go off. <laughs> that's when we get somebody that's in live, in action, he's on call, it's, it's probably a dystocia, we're going to have to take a break. No, just joking. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> sound check. Sound That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about um, calving and normal calving as as things progress. You know, I think that the one thing we always kind of lose track of time. We lose track of what's going on with that heifer. But but there are different stages, right? Right. Um, none of them can read. I've never, not met a cow that could read a book yet. <laughs> but um, there are some predicted times that we we need to look at and um, times when we need to act and, and times when we just need to leave them alone as well. So, you know, we kind of, we go through stages and there's there's three stages of calving and uh, um, the whole process is uh, uh, what I would call is a prep, push, and placenta. You know, it makes it pretty simple. So the first stage is stage one, which is prep phase, and that's leading up to it and all the things are getting relaxed and the cow's getting ready to, to make enough opening to get this calf ready to go and then there's the push phase which is the actual labor and then uh, that should be pretty quickly and then the, the third one is the placenta and so after that the placenta should pass and we should have uh, have some time for for the cow to, to to get ready to raise the calf you know so so when we let's get into that prep phase and and I assume that's when she starts to go off by herself and yeah different behavior and yeah yeah isolation um, you know some people, if you see them in a stall, if they're confined, they'll kind of nest, they'll kind of do those kind of things. Cows are experienced at this thing, and it's pretty fast, and sometimes we don't even notice it. You know, one day she looks okay, next day she's got a pretty good udder, and everything's starting to look relaxed, and man, you're ready to go. Heifers, you know, learning the, learning the ropes, it could take weeks, you know, sometimes for this to prep. Udder filling, ligaments loosening, all that stuff, so it takes time. And then, so so that has a real varied response, and there's no hurry there because we're we're getting cervix dilation, and and once the cervix gets dilated, then we enter that push phase. Right. Is there more of a time once they start press pushing? Yes. So again, cows most of the time. Sometimes it's just a cough. <laughs> Out comes a calf. Um, so within a half an hour, once they start that water bag breaks and they start pushing in the cow, they should be out. I mean, pretty quickly within a half an hour usually. And then uh, the heifers, you know, they take a little time. Got to dilate and, and uh, loosen things up, and it could take up to an hour. But um, what the bottom line is, in that push phase, if, if things aren't happening um, pretty, pretty abruptly within an hour, we need to intervene. And uh, sometimes it takes a heifer longer to get it out. But uh, I like that hour kind of cut off. Cool. Well, now that we've kind of gone through normal, Kevin, that'll lead us in right after the break. We'll talk about some of the dystocias. Right. All right, folks. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. More with Dr. Matt Meisner on call 
after this. This Meet the Future Veterinarian is brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Amanda Emery recently received an Amstut scholarship. Raised on a beef and crop farm in Indiana, she is a second year vet student at Purdue University. Passionate about animal agriculture and public health, Amanda has served in Haiti with the Christian Veterinary Mission and is also pursuing a Master's of Public Health degree at the University of Minnesota. This Meet the Future Veterinarian is brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Tyson Beyer, a student at the University of Saskatchewan, recently received an Amstut scholarship. As a fourth generation rancher raised on a cow-calf operation, Tyson grew up in the cattle business and it was natural for him to pursue an education in bovine medicine. After graduation, he plans to work in a large animal practice, then move into bovine reproductive technologies. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Hi, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Baxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern right here on RFD TV. Beef producers asked for it, and Norbrook delivers. Introducing new Enroflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine respiratory disease. Enroflox 100 is an FDA-approved, ready-to-use injectable antimicrobial solution to treat BRD associated with Mannheimia hemolytica, Pastorella multocida, and Histophilus somni in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle. Administered SQ as a multiple-day therapy. Consult with your veterinarian today about Enroflox 100, the new choice. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Enroflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine and swine respiratory disease. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Matt Meisner, and we're talking about calving disorders or normal calving, and now let's move into dystocia because we got to the push phase. We've waited 30 minutes and nothing's happened. And, and as a producer or a rancher, what's the first thing we need to do? Frequent checks, I mean, um, having a plan, I mean, is it is it going to be now? We've um, we've watched her and we've seen if she's going to have problems. Is she showing signs of stress? Um, you know, is she really laboring on this situation or is, uh, you know, is she just kind of pacing? But having a plan for uh, restraint, you know, getting her caught, squeeze shoot, uh, set of panels or a rail that can be opened up someplace to safely get her restrained and then uh, do a good exam. And um, most of that is having a good um, visual and maybe even palpating exam, kind of cleaning her up and, and making sure everything is coming through the birth canal okay, if you're comfortable with that. If not, um, that's the time to say it's time to call the veterinarian and have them do that. But, you know, having that ability to have her restrained safely certainly helps the, the veterinarian be more efficient if need be at that point in time um, and uh, can get a good exam. Make sure everything's positioned right, nose, front feet, and everything's coming through the canal. Um, sometimes intervening there is, is, the, is the easiest way to go. Yeah, and, and that's the other thing. You know, I think that we overlook the restraint part because there's nothing 
more frustrating than than a cow that's she's trying to have a calf she doesn't know what's going on she's getting up she's pushing she's getting up looking around to see where the calf is and then when you show up as a veterinarian or as a producer you're trying to figure out how am i even going to check this thing yeah and and the safety of you your family your practitioner and the cow is important right yep and uh you know having a you know, a way to easily, efficiently get her in there too. You know, not having to work her too hard to, to get her to a point um, to restrain her. So planning ahead, you know, that that's part of the, the calving problems that we're looking at. So as far as these dystocias go. And then, you know, there's plenty of producers out there that are um, have delivered tons of calves. And then, but there's always going to be that one that you're going to go, something's not right, you know. And, and things that we see as veterinarians or especially in the clinic is the odd ones. And seen things where we've had uh, twisted uteruses or uterine torsions and and some of these conjoined twins and and the bizarre things that you know they're still the most experienced producers and then goes in and just says whoa um, at that point in time if you have the ability and you have a good relationship with the veterinarian it's probably a good idea to call them too. You know? I thought they just uh, the experienced ones called us when it was snowing or yeah. <laughs> when it was raining yeah. was yeah. more than the <laughs> and seen. You know, but it's, and it's always good to call early because uh, you know veterinarians at this time of year might be traveling the ridges doing a lot of this and so it's nice to have them be able to make a plan they might be on their way by that that direction so, so when you reach in there you want to feel two feet in the head right yep and uh, then we got to figure out which feet they are and look at the way that feet bend the fronts knees and fetlocks bend the same way and the backs are opposite and so there's a bunch of just systematic um, exams that we do at that point and um, knowing if that calf's going to make it through that birth canal it might just be a giant calf or head turned around. There's a whole bunch of different different situations that we can get into and, and uh, make a plan. And at that point, um, we want to see progression. And so once we start, then I go half an hour time. Cool. We're going to take a break, folks. When we come back, more with Dr. Matt Meisner on Cabin Problem. This hog is Hanover hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. Calves require adequate, high-quality colostrum immediately following birth to receive the immune and nutritional support needed to fight diseases and thrive. Next Generation Colostrix Colostrum Replacer and Supplement are USDA licensed to aid in the treatment of failure of passive transfer and contain natural maternal bovine colostrum antibodies against E. coli K99. Ask your animal health supplier for Colostrix or visit agrilabs.com for details. Colostrix makes all systems go. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We're having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. unbelievable. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Cow calf, stalker, and feedlot producers know that effective parasite control improves overall herd performance and profitability. Norbrook offers a comprehensive, economical line of boron and injectable parasiticides for every livestock operation. Consult with your local animal health supplier to set up a program that protects your investment and brings larger cattle checks this fall. See for yourself why the Noromectin line from Norbrook is the practical choice for your herd. TrueTest Group, weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Matt Meisner, and we're from the College of Vet Med at Kansas State University. We're talking about 
calving disorders or, or getting that live calf on the ground, and we're talking during the break, you have three goals. Right. Number one is, you know, to, to get me a live, viable calf, you know, so we want this to be efficient and easy on the calf. Number two um, is preservation of the welfare of the cow, you know, so um, pain, welfare, distraughtness, all that kind of stuff. And then third um, is maintaining her future reproductive soundness. So we don't want to um, injure things bad enough that she's not able to breed back. So I have those three goals going into going into each one of these situations. Yeah, and and we want to we want to keep her in the herd, and uh, you know, and and then the feedlot dystocias. We're worried about the heifer, yeah. not necessarily the right the calf. You know, because we're in the business of producing beef. Right. And so the best way to do this is to be efficient. And uh, so I usually, I look at my watch, you know, it's time flies when you're having a good time. And I want to be having some sort of progress about every 15 to 30 minutes. So if I need to get a leg up or a leg head's turned around, I want to have that lined up and ready to go within 15 minutes or half an hour. And each stage, whether it's breech, you know, we have a tail or we have a posterior, I just want to be sure that I'm getting things moving up the back end efficiently. And if I'm not, then it's already been discussed as to what is plan B. Um, is it a live calf? Is it a dead calf? Do we do, when do we go to a cesarean? And we've, it's been shown pretty often if we have a decent facility, um, a sooner decision for a cesarean is, is, uh, is, is usually a good one. Um, cow's in a better shape, calf is in better shape, um, all in all, if we have the right situation, you know, uh, for a cesarean. So well, we when we're that. talking about the beef prices, Oh, with yeah. where they're at. A cesarean section, folks, is, is nothing on the cost for, for what getting a live viable calf that you're going to sell that's going to be $1,500, $1,600 mm -hmm. um, at the time of wean. Right. Yeah. And, and, and if, you, if you're able to do a, a good, efficient C-section with a cow in better shape, her chances of breeding back are a lot better than uh, waiting too long, you know, so keep yeah. it going. So a cesarean doesn't necessarily preclude or, or do decrease the the reproductive efficiency right not not uh, not in uh, um, not if it's done efficiently and the decisions made a little bit earlier on and you, you know you have the right you have the right setup to do it um, it's, it's not it doesn't do that to it. And, and a lot of times um, if you're wanting to help that veterinarian or help the cow sometimes just load her up and bring her to the veterinarian you know they're gonna have the right facility you know they're gonna have the equipment there you know it's it's you're you're dealing more on your time schedule. It's something that that I see more and more is the hauling clinic. Right, and more efficiency, so a veteran can do more at once. Um, you have all the medical equipment that you need to revive that calf. You know, um, a whole bunch of different uh, medical interventions you can do at the at the clinic. Plus, everybody's warmer and drier and all that <laughs> kind of stuff. Um, but in the end, everybody benefits from that, and uh, you do see more haul in type situations. Cool. Well, let's take a break. When we come back, let's talk about taking care of that cow and that calf after the, after the calf hits the ground. Good. Thanks, Matt. Thank you for watching Doc Talk. More here after the break. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica, Inc. I'm Dr. Nels Lindbergh with Animal Medical Center in Great Bend, Kansas, also with Production Animal Consultation. Today's tip for today, we're going to discuss injection site areas and dealing with injection site lesions. So we talk about this injectable neck region, and we always have this triangle that we, that we think about. Top line of the neck, slope of the shoulder, and back up. So as you can see, as we get an animal in the chute, the triangle sometimes just disappears. So we do the best we can. We still come up here. We can get an injection here, sometimes up high sometimes down lower. It's, it's crucial though that you're always a hands width apart with those injections. As we were talking, another option is to come up here around front and give a shot up front. BQA was mainly started because of injection site lesions in meat in the rear of the animal. And with the advent of BQA, we've done an awesome job at eliminating those injection site abscesses. It must be a, a, an inherited trait because I have never wanted to do anything other than be in the cattle business. 
And it's interesting as I have grandchildren now, little bitty ones, all they want to do is go to the barn, swing a rope, and be a cowboy. It's, it's something, it's a, it's a lifestyle that we have, the way we make a living, obviously. But it's really more than that. It gives us the opportunity as a family to be able to work together and enjoy each other's company and make a living at the same time. We've been using Triangle for years, uh, and the reason we do it has been safe and effective, and we're going to continue to do that. We'll put the cows in the chute twice a year, spring and fall. 100% of our cattle get vaccinated with Triangle. Working your cattle just got easier. Introducing the new Vet Gun Delivery System, a new way to apply topical insecticides to your cattle. The Vet Gun lets you remotely treat cattle with effective parasite control, so you can do it from an ATV, on horseback, or just walking among the herd. It's that simple. The proven topical insecticide AML Vet Cap is used with the Vet Gun. It works fast to control horn flies and lice while minimizing stress on your cattle. Fast, easy, effective. Vet Gun. Check with your animal health supplier for availability. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Say this is a calf that's been run through the chute a few too many times. Going through the chute stresses cattle, causing them not to eat like they should. Luckily, Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ provides proven protection against key respiratory diseases in a single shot with just one trip through the chute. Talk to your veterinarian about Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ, and soon your calves will relax and eat like a whole different animal. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Doc. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Matt Meisner, and we're talking about getting the calf out of the cow. And calving season is upon us. We're, there's a lot of excitement. It's, it's, um, Dr. Meisner is an associate clinical professor here at the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine, where he sees hundreds of cows a year, teaches this. We're fortunate to have him as a guest. It's always good to have you on the show. Always Thanks. You bring great wisdom and, and, uh, you just, you do a good job, not only with our clients and, and their animals, but I'm very thankful for what you do for our students. Appreciate it. Uh, appreciate you. Let's talk a little bit, Matt, about the, the post-calving care. And, and we gotta get to that third stage, right? Right, so, um, you know, we've got, the, we've got the calf on the ground, um, and sometimes there's some intervention that needs to be done right then and there, as far as resuscitating that calf. Um, and even a slight delay through that pelvis can get them short on oxygen and different things. And so there's a situation sometimes where we've got to intervene within that first five minutes and we have a, various drugs and, and uh, treatment protocols that we kind of follow with that. Um, get them breathing, get some air passage, um, and then, uh, you know, kind of watching the cow as well. So did we have some, some rough birthing where we have to address some injuries to the cow? You know, so um, address those right then and there. So that first five minutes to an hour is just getting that calf viable and, and able to sustain itself. And then after that, you know, down the road, several hours, the cow should be passing her placenta uh, within six to 12 hours, but sometimes they'll retain. And then within that first hour or two, we really want that calf to have its first meal of colostrum too. So either he's going to be vi viable enough to get up and do it himself, or um, there's Sometimes it's just easier just to go ahead and strip her out and, and tube it right then and there or get him to take a bottle. And, and the sooner the better on Clostrum, right? Right. We're, you're within a 24-hour window, long window. I mean, ideally within six or eight, they need to have that first bit of Clostrum to be absorbed. And then after that, things start shutting down and, and uh, they don't absorb it uh, systemically after that. So within that first six or eight hour. When, when, uh, what's the, what's the, the, your stance on, on, retained placentas because I, I mean my granddad and dad we made a hundred calls a year on retained placentas right we wanted to pass it on our own at all costs we don't really want to force it out and strip it that still shows that that causes quite a bit of inflammation so she might retain it we treat her support her antibiotics sometimes depending on how healthy she is but most cows will eventually you know uh, get that to 
to loosen up and, and fall out, it can be pretty horrendous by the time it comes out. But as long as she's healthy, I let her do it on her own. We can do some gentle help, but we don't want to clean them. Cool. Well, thanks for being on the show today. Thanks for being here. Folks, thanks for watching Doc Talk. And if you want to know more about what Dr. Meisner and I do here at Kansas State University, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. Remember, always work with your local practitioner on many of these issues. Thanks for watching Doc Talk today. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility.